Let's talk about shot spotters. Alex, you are from California, where yes. these are prolific. Do you know what these are? Yeah, um, it's, as far as I know, it's basically just like sound detecting infrastructure that's like set up in a few cities around like California that basically triangulate um, the sound of gunshots by like profiling certain sounds like very specific to how a gunshot sounds. So basically like if someone were to just be like, ra ta 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 shoot off a gun in the city or something dumb like that, like it would just like come find you and you'd get tracked by the cyber police. Yeah, yeah, so this has been a fixture for a really long time. And this is part of a larger, I guess you would call it like surveillance infrastructure that exists in cities. Uh, I wanted to lead, like, lead with this and then show off this really excellent article by the EFF showing off the various types of urban surveillance that exist. Because a lot of people that live in cities don't know the kinds of like layers of surveillance that they live under. So this might mean uh, everything from like satellite surveillance to cell phone surveillance. And this visualization makes it really easy for people to kind of understand like who might be intercepting your data, why they might be doing it, and what kinds of ways a city might be tracking you. So just looking through this, I love the, again, I love the vis visualization because you can uh, see some of the like warrantless ways police can also gather data. Uh, oh, I, and then this guy, yeah, <laughs> all the way at the bottom. Cyber so crime. it just it just keeps going. Like, and this is a great way for people to get familiar with the types of surveillance that are out there. Satellite, uh, satellite photography, obviously, uh, internet traffic surveillance. Um, this is from like the internet service provider. This is what people you know, tell you to like use a VPN or something to try to evade. Um, cellular communication surveillance. Um, of course, this kind of information can be legally collected or they can just create like a fake cell phone tower, which is something that happens increasingly in uh, American cities, especially in Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, drones. So we've been learning a lot about all sorts of police agencies buying drones or operating drones for lots of different reasons. And some of them are relatively benign and some of them have really, really kind of broad scope where they can just use them for kind of whatever they want. Um, with the repurposing of, for example, like a, uh, a bomb diffusing bomb to like end a standoff by blowing a guy up with a bomb one time. Like it, it's a little concerning that police departments are using these more and more just because like, okay, like it, it yeah. just seems like if the tool's there and it can be used in another way in an emergency, they'll just do it. And then there's a precedent for that happening in the future. Like a drone is a whole new platform to worry about. Um, as I was saying, like having a drone rumbling uh, through your yard might be very alarming and cause people to inadvertently curse by accident. Uh, and, you know, if you were in your backyard, like nude sunbathing or something, and a police drone like flew around like on a hot pursuit somewhere all low, and then that data was like subpoenaed in, <laughs> in like a public, you know, or, you know, was otherwise made public, that would, you know, okay, that's a pretty lame example. But still, like there are other ways where having lots of drones in public spaces and having just everything enter into public record means that like, there's no expectation of privacy even in your own yard anymore. Even if you have a big fence, like there's police drones that are legal and they're going over all the time. Like, you know, what's really the, the barrier? Um, we have social media surveillance. This is stuff that I teach when I do OSINT. So that's how different agencies are able to automate data collection on certain people or certain screen names or other things that tie people together online. And also traffic cameras. Traffic cameras are something that a lot of people forget about, but often these cameras are connected to intelligence. So you have sketchy companies out there who will do facial recognition. They'll do license plate collection. License plate collection is probably the easiest because the cameras really don't need to be that high resolution. But there are lots of cities that are upgrading to higher resolution cameras that are capable of doing things like facial recognition. And that's of a lot of interest to, well, pretty much anybody that wants to track movement. So yeah, it's very important to note that every time you go through an intersection that has one of these cameras, it's very likely that your license plate is being logged. So if you were to, you know, maybe not tell the truth about where you were, if you were in a city, the odds are it would be relatively easy for someone to find out if you were lying. So just something to note that this sort of persistent um, like camera surveillance is now tied into automated systems that build databases every time you go through an intersection. So, you know, I also hear stories of agencies making it really easy for other police agencies, even if they have no reason to, to collect the um, automated license plate data from any agency they want. So if you're some small you know, police agency, you can just go and automatically request access to data from lots of larger police departments, even if you don't have a very good reason, even if you just kind of feel like it. So 
Yeah, this is something that a lot of people forget about, but a lot of the time these cameras aren't just, you know, tied to, you know, video recording, they're also tied to identify, tag, and store data in a video feed. It's scary, like, how many different, like, metrics they can gather on you. And, like, yeah. tie together all these data sources to just, like, pinpoint information about you that are so subtle, like something, just like your license plate can be figured, can be used to figure out, like, where you were at, like, what time. Yeah, it's just people, you know, people like, oh, I evaded surveillance, I, I drove and no one saw me. It's like, no, if you went through intersections that have these cameras, like lots of crimes are solved by this. A, a lot of like hit and runs are solved by this, where there's like a, a very vague vehicle description and they can go back and basically query the license plate data, look at the vehicle registration and rule out anything that wasn't in the area. It's really sophisticated. So um, there's a lot of crimes that are solved by this. There's a lot of dumb people that get caught by this. And it's just because most people aren't aware that the, the traffic cameras are building a database about your movement that is very easy for any investigator in the country to access, provided they have some sort of law enforcement tie and they can make the right inquiry. The data is not, uh, it doesn't require a warrant in most cases. Um, it's considered like a data that can be accessed by a legal police agency, um, provided they have a reason. So a reason is not a warrant. Um, and that means that this sort of information can be accessed much more readily than other sorts of surveillance data. And that's kind of why I, in particular, am kind of wowed by how much police are using automated license plate scanners. The data is just way more easy for them to access than any sort of information that would require like more of a warrant or like some, some other more probable cause. They, provided they have a reason to be searching, can really just start doing searches in that database um, without a lot of uh, needing to provide like justification. So that's the danger of automated license plate scanners is people don't know about them and they, mm -hmm. they don't consider them when they're doing stuff. So it's easy to like, you know, forget something and be like, I'm sure I was there and then maybe not have actually been there. And then there's evidence where you were either not being truthful or forgot or something, but you could immediately be caught in a mistruth, even if it's an unintentional one by the sort of surveillance that people you know, don't really remember. So another one is surveillance of cell phones. We talked a little bit about like, either you can be the provider going through the data and looking at metadata, or you could be someone who's creating a fake cell phone tower and forcing people to connect. Um, oh, sorry, automated license plate readers was a whole separate one, but of course there's also cameras that just mm -hmm. do camera stuff. Um, I just in particular don't like the automated license plate readers. I think not enough people know about them and like they are so easy to collect data with. You can literally run your own Raspberry Pi project and make your own little like homegrown surveillance state if you wanted to. And there's a, like little uh, private communities and stuff that do. There's malls that do and then resell that data to government agencies. So it's just really worth it to know like if there's a, a camera pointed at your license plate exactly what's happening behind that. And then of course we just talked about acoustic gunshot detection, which Alex explained so eloquently. Uh, that's when you have boxes that are designed to look for a specific sound and triangulate it. And in this case, usually for gunshots. So these sorts of acoustic surveillance devices can you know, always be repurposed for uh, other things because they're perfectly capable of hearing conversations and other sorts of things that are happening in the neighborhoods that they're installed in, which are predominantly like poor neighborhoods. So um, yeah, it, it's just, if you put a bunch of microphones, it could be used to intercept communications. And then like, say you're only gonna use them for one thing. Naturally, people might be a little suspicious if the capability is there and people just promise not to use it. Um, and then of course we have a new threat, which is internet connected security cameras. This is something where like ring cameras, uh, all these other like doorbell cameras uh, are, it's possible to just pipe them into like a police data feed. And lots of people are encouraged to do that by police with a bunch of these hybrid programs that allow police agencies to request either directly uh, from doorbells that are near like a, an area where a crime happened or to actually have people continuously stream to something that the police can see. Uh, that's an opt-in process, but it's still getting to the point where it's very easy for police to just request this without uh, necessarily like a warrant or any specific reason. So they're basically able to do mass requests for surveillance data from lots of homeowners who might not actually have any idea what actually like happened that they're looking for. And this is kind of a problem now because we have lots of privately owned surveillance data that is easily accessible by police and doesn't really require a warrant. So this is something that because it's people's individual 
individual data, or the fact that we've now created a process for police to request this without, again, very much information, means that people might be sharing information they might not want to share if they knew what it was for or how it might be used. So this is, again, a problem that's relatively recent. We didn't have lots of like home internet connected doorbells that were like readily available to police to just query if they know that there's one in the area. But these are something that are solving crimes uh, and that's why people continue to use them and police continue to rely on them. Because just like automated license plate data, this doesn't require a lot to request. You can just ask people and if they say no, like there's no real cost for that if you're able to do it at scale. So police are kind of tending towards using the, trending towards using this data that they don't have to go through a big long process to access, but that's kind of a problem for people because it means there's a lot of data that's being exposed without them necessarily knowing it. And then of course we have electronic monitoring. That's uh, the sort of thing with like ankle monitors. There's mm -hmm. lots of stuff with that. Police, you, did you know pol like police can just put like a GPS device, the, um, like if you go across the border, and no warrant, like they, really? they can just do that. So there's some specific things about this, but it is pretty startling that police can just put a GPS tracker on uh, your vehicle if you are going like across the border, because lots of people do that for normal reasons. That's weird. Um, so yeah, it's uh, there's there are some caveats to what police can and can't do um, when you do certain things, again, like cross the border. So that's a, an interesting thing I wasn't aware of. Do they have to disclose that to you? Because no. that's really concerning. No, okay. they do not. Because that would spoil it. If they're just like, hey, yeah. buddy, I put a tracker on that car. Don't you do anything bad? Like, that's just like, I don't think that they, yeah. I don't, <laughs> yeah. Think, they, I don't think that that's the, the strategy they're going by. Uh, and then uh, finally, like, we have international, uh, international internet traffic surveillance. This is something where uh, there were a lot, I can't say the specific company names on the stream, but there were a lot of companies who were found to be like intercepting data that was entering the country or going in and out of the country um, on behalf of certain agencies. And this is because that data is really valuable and being able to comb through it super quickly means that you would be able to do a lot of surveillance. And of course, that is something that's very attractive. So these are just some of the different infrastructure that might be tracking you in a city um, or really anywhere at this point, but you'll find almost all of these in like Los Angeles mm -hmm. or Orange County or some of the places we're familiar with. And that's why uh, you know it's, it's important to be aware of this stuff and, and know what it is when you see it because I started seeing uh, pickup trucks driving around my college campus with automated license plate scanners. And I realized there was a whole black market of people selling automated license plate data to repo people and then making it so uh, anybody who's looking for a car that you know they're trying to repo knows where it is. So there's like lots of uh, interesting stuff going on when it comes to surveillance. If you guys have any stories you think we should cover for next week, feel free to leave them in a comment on the YouTube show. And then also, if you have any questions, maybe from this broadcast or from any of our other streams, then you can go ahead and leave them and we will answer them on our next Q&A stream, which should be on Tuesday. So hopefully we see you all there. Make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell if you want to know when we go live. And we'll see you next time. Adios. Bye.